What's up, everybody? Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome. We are currently still in cycle 20, and today is May 22nd. We are on cycle day 20, and we are on 6 DPO. And so we're pretty much in the middle of our two-week wait. AF is supposed to arrive. Hopefully, she does not arrive. Hopefully, she takes a nine month vacation we're hoping and praying um we've been like discussing a whole bunch of like different things between husband and i because um coming up soon we're embarking on almost a year and a half of ttc and i don't know maybe it's just not our time i don't know if we have fertility issues because we haven't um consulted a physician yet but still trying to work out um, the right insurance trying to get him the correct insurance because insurance is just astronomical so anyway but what's really exciting is that Sunday we we will be celebrating our one year wedding anniversary on Sunday I can't believe it's been one year of marriage and I can't say the year went fast but it went <laughs> and um, it's it has been the best and the most challenging year of both of our lives because we pretty much like I was telling my cousin the other day it's like you have to learn a whole brand new person again because folks are one way when you're dating but when you living with a person and then you're finally married to a person, you just meet a whole nother person <laughs> that you have to get used to their ways, their habits. And just like my dad told me before we even got married, you have to pick your battles, choose what things you can live with and what things, you know, just, just like whatever. You know what I mean? And so the things that you feel like you really want that person to change, you address it. And the things that, you know, that's just a part of who they are you just let it fall by the wayside you talk crap under your breath and just keep it moving and so i cannot believe we've been married one year on sunday so hopefully husband has something planned um and i'll tell you guys all about it hopefully you can take some pictures or whatnot and i can share them with you we can go somewhere cool um anyway i have a lot to update you guys on in a really really short period of time but the first thing i want to do is say hey to my new subbies hey new subscribers what's happening um so uh everything is pretty much straight i feel great i've been exercising you know regularly like i'm supposed to and i lost weight i can't believe it <laughs> but i lost weight not much but it's it's enough that you know gives you that extra you know push so hopefully by the time we get all um we get all of this insurance thing sorted out and we decide on a reputable you know reasonable decent insurance to go with i would have lost i would be out of the 200 range because as of right now I was uh, 251, but right now I'm 248, so I've lost a little bit of weight, and um, I want to be completely out of the 200s, you know, so when you go to the doctor, they can actually see that there's progress being made, you know, um, and weight won't be a huge issue. It still will be an issue because for my height, I'll still be considered overweight, but I'll be out of the morbidly obese range for my height, so that's the plan. So while we're waiting on that, you know, you know, the insurance and stuff, we're going to be proactive and do the damn thing. 
so yeah husband and I well my dad I was riding down the street I think it was Sunday and a commercial came on about uh, foster, being a foster parent and I didn't really think nothing of it nothing of it I was just like you know hmm, that sounds like a you know a good idea so then my dad called me and he was just like have you guys you know considered you know being a foster parent and I was like well I don't really I mean it's cool with me but I have my fears about it I don't have a problem being a foster parent but my only fear is getting attached to the child and that you know then they'll either be taken out of the home because reunited with their uh, the, the parents their birth parents or being adopted out and you nurtured that child and you know raised that child and got used to that child and they've gotten used to you and they just get taken out of the home and so that was my big uh, con when it came to you know being a foster parent and um, I didn't really want to discuss with my husband because I know how he feels but I just wanted to bring it bring it up to him and he just was just like he felt the same way about them being taken out of the home abruptly or whatnot and then you know we discussed adoption as well and this these are all things that we just are in discussion of there is nothing set in stone or nothing that we would make a, a concrete decision on you know until we have exhausted every single fertility treatment known to man <laughs> you know so we're just discussing our options and adoption and fostering a child is you know were some options and so he told me we'll never stop TTCing but if we don't conceive a child within five years we will go forward with an adoption you know we'll, we'll never stop TTCing we'll always start keep TTCing but if, if in five years we have not conceived we will definitely start the process in adopt, adopting and so I was really, really excited about that because I just want to be a mama. You know, I'm not, I don't care about race. I don't care who's, you know, who I am, who, who we get blessed with. I just want to be a mother. We want to be parents. And so, yeah, so I was just like, you know, I was excited. And, you know, five years may seem like a long time for some people, but the years are just like flying by. You know, I'm already 31. I never thought I'd be 31, you know, because my 20s, in my opinion, just took forever. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the kind of discussions that we had and um, so that's the plan and I encourage you to talk to your to your significant other there are some people that may not ever conceive you may not conceive and there are some people who end up adopting a child and then they end up getting pregnant it's just weird I mean things just happen when they happen you never really know and so you know, I told you guys that I was embarking on some different things just to keep myself busy, keep myself occupied so I'm not obsessing over the TTC, this TTC process. And um, I have started my own business. Yay! And I'm really, really excited about it. Um, I have opened up my own online jewelry boutique. And I'm so excited about it. It's just... Um, we have like, I have like stylish, beautiful jewelry that from, you know, cutting edge designers at really, really reasonable prices. And they're just really beautiful pieces. So if you're into jewelry and you want to check out my online jewelry boutique, you are welcome to. I will leave the link down below. You check it out. Let me know what you think. If you see something that you like, you know, send me, shoot me an email. I'll have the email of my uh, my boutique down below you shoot me an email and I'll put that item on sale for you and I'll send you a coupon <laughs> for $20 off so it's just something that you know you just when you when you're in the workforce it's hard working for other people it really is hard working for other people and I'm just at an age where I just don't want to deal with the politics of working for other folks and I grew up with parents who always had five or six jobs on the side even as a child you know my dad worked in um, solid waste management and my mother was a, um, a RN a scrub nurse 
uh, an operating room nurse if you don't know what a scrub nurse is and they work their regular nine to five jobs um nine to five so to speak and on the weekends my dad had his um little lawn service he would cut everybody's yard in the neighborhood above and beyond at one point um we were delivering newspapers. I never forget it. We used to get at four o'clock in the morning, and we used to get the Miami Herald, and we used to we had a station wagon. I think it was a station wagon or a van. I'm not sure. And we used to ride up and down the neighborhood and deliver newspapers. And that's just how we, you know, we had such a good, just a good comfortable life. I always thought I grew up upper middle class because that's what it was. My mom used to take in kids on her days off or when she was working because she worked for an agency which she worked like on contract so she didn't work every single day she would work you know on contract and so when she wasn't working she would keep children for money and she's also a seamstress and so she had a a, um, a clothing store so we were always surrounded by parents and people who had who had on a bunch of different hats you know uh, job wise and so I'm learning, you know, to do that as well. I'm gonna definitely keep my regular nine to five, but I decided to start my own business so that, you know, we can be a little bit more comfortable in life. And there's nothing wrong with that. So you have to drive the the, the smart, the savvy, the know-how, and the the um the work ethic. Go on ahead and do that. You know, get you a little side gig, something that doesn't take a whole lot of time something that you can just dedicate two or three hours a week or a day you know to building up or whatever and you know because times are hard times are not easy and um we're just trying to do whatever we can to to build our family and you know we're trying to get a house in the next three years we're like we're on a three-year plan you know credit first save money and then buy a house you know what i mean and then kids would just happen in between all all of that and so I'm trying to hustle y'all because man oh man we you want to have a, a an enjoyable comfortable life nobody's trying to get rich now we are we play the powerball honey and I play you know the lottery every now and then and I hope I win it <laughs> I probably won't win until I'm 75 because only old people win you know but um you just want to live the best life you can and want to you know want your your children and your family to to live the best life that they can so that's all i'm trying to do so you don't it's no obligation you don't have to buy anything you don't even have to 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 care about it just take a look see if you like it you know tell a friend if you're not really interested in jewelry like that tell a friend maybe they might be interested and just let me know and whatever it is that you like i'll put it on sale and give you a coupon on top of that you know so just check it out but other than that we're just waiting and hoping that we get a nice little valentine not valentine's day but anniversary present as in we conceive but if not we will be back once again next week for cycle 21 Hopefully this is the last cycle. I say that every cycle because you never know. Every cycle may potentially be your last cycle. So if you have any questions or comments, you can either e email me um, or you can leave a comment down below. If it's personal, I would prefer that you email me. Um, but other than that, that is it for now. And so I'm going to go work it out. And... I'll keep y'all guys in the next few weeks. I'm gonna do a, um, a pre-pregnancy get fit for pregnancy um, workout video. So watch out for that in the near future, in the next few weeks. And so yeah, that's pretty much it. So I will talk to you guys later. Enjoy the rest of your week and peace and here. Bye.